Welcome, Samantha, into a very interesting topic we will cover right now. It's all about student loans. Ooh. Very heavy one, right? Very so nice. during pandemic, I think there was a pause on student loans. Yes. And a lot of kids or, you know, those that graduating schools, they were having an idea that the student loans were put on pause. Yes. And under current administration, what's your experience, what people need to really know and understand, and let's really dive in into like the danger of student loans sure. versus a home ownership. Okay, great. Yeah, so student loans, it's a big topic, isn't it? There's yes. so many people, whether you're young and you're about to enter into college or you're older and they're still dealing with the pains of having taken out loans in the past. But yeah, during COVID, the government did have a huge student loan relief program under the CARES Act. And we did see so many clients, borrowers, a lot of America, they were able to take a pause in having to make these payments. And it was great. There are some people who I, I know personally, my clients that are making close to $1,000 a month in student loan payments. Wow. And with that pause for the last two and a half years, they were able to save a lot of money take care of their debt, you know, build up their family's finances in a way that they've never been able to because of these payments. Um, but now everyone's saying, oh, the CARES Act, the relief is ending. Mm. What does that look like? Uh, and so I'm here to talk about a few of those things now. Um, starting in August, a lot of the payments now will resume for people. Now, you do have options. You still have an option of deferring the loans if you need to or entering into forbearance if you can't afford to. But the relief, that portion is ending, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in August. So we will have to come to a decision as individuals. What do we want to do with our own student loans? Now, there was a lot of talk about student loan forgiveness, right? I'm sure people saw on the news. Yes. Biden said, I'm canceling student loans. Yes. Um, it was a huge uh, platform that he went up against. And he did say to people, we're going to cancel at least $20,000 worth of student loan balances, right, for a lot of people. And the thing is, they had this whole program where you entered your information, you put the application in, and clients and individuals were receiving responses and said, congratulations, your student loan is forgiven. Wow. So they received those emails. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize is that Biden was actually pushing for the reform. He was pushing for this to get passed. But Senate the Senate recently, just maybe two, three weeks ago, they actually struck it down and that program is actually not going through. Wow. So it's a lot of misinformation out there where it's unfortunate. A lot of people are thinking, wow, 20,000, that makes a huge difference in my life. I'm not going to owe it anymore. And uh, actually, you might still owe that. Now, the good thing is that there are other reforms in place that the government is trying to pass. So, for example, in terms of student loan forgiveness, they are passing some reforms to the income driven repayment program. So I will explain what we had before in the past where you had to be in some kind of repayment program on your um, government loans. And they have one where if you document that you've made payments for 20 years, we will then forgive your balance, whatever mm. is left. Now, that works really well for some clients. I have one uh, of my clients. She ended up taking out loans, going to graduate school. Her student loan balance was close to 400000 Wow. Very high, just with interest accumulating over time. And she got the notice two weeks ago that her she had made the 20 years of payments, which is amazing for her. And she had a balance of... A quite a significant amount is close to 250,000 and she actually got that forgiven. Wow. So that is amazing. That is out there. Now, the reform that the government is looking into, which is really helpful, is being able to include, uh, be more inclusive with the parameters because they're very strict in their guidelines before. They said, mm, you weren't necessarily in a repayment program, so I can't count those years. Mm. Or mm, you were in a forbearance, so I can't count those years. So what they're doing now is actually um, increasing the scope of what they're able to include in this forgiveness program. And that'll do a huge, uh, it'll make a huge impact for our clients. Um, I think now they're including periods, periods of deferment. They're including periods of forbearance. So even if you weren't making actual payments, but you were in one of those programs, that would count towards the 20 years. That's great. Right? If you made a payment, but you were late, 
that's okay. As long as they can document a payment, they'll include it. So that reform is still there and it's really exciting. But I know just emotionally, there are some people that are still saying, oh my gosh, 20 years, that's a long time. I don't really feel like my loans will get forgiven. Um, and there's a lot of information that people are posting and saying, yeah, I'm going to get my loans forgiven. It's going to completely go away. Well, this is where we have to come back, you know, mm -hmm. recenter and kind of know exactly what's going on uh, because we're not there yet where they're doing mass forgiveness and just saying, oh, you don't owe this anymore. Wow. So, yeah, it, it, it is a little complicated, the student loan situation. Um, I think when we, you said earlier that we were going to talk about private and public loans. Yes. Yeah, it, it this whole system is confusing because a lot of people don't even know the difference Correct. between private and public, meaning public loans are ones that uh, we as individuals apply for through the government. So the government has multiple servicers. For example, if you have a loan with Nelnet, Navient, Great Lakes, these are servicers on behalf of the government to mm -hmm. give you a loan. Mm -hmm. Now, there are um, private loans where you can go to the school and directly get it from your school. You take a loan out there or there are other banks that will issue you a, a loan. So, for example, I have clients who have student loans with Discover, for example. Now that you are not getting a loan through the government, you're getting uh, specifically with a private lender. Mm -hmm. And when we don't know the differences between who we're getting these loans from, there is confusion. I don't think when you go to school and you're applying for a loan, you really care who's going to give you the Correct. loan. Yeah. And this is, I think, where a lot of students yes. will be caught in a position where they yep. need to understand the difference between yes. private loan and public. public. Yes, exactly. Because if you go online and you say, oh, I have a semester to pay for, let me just apply, you might get approved through Sally May. But that also means during this whole two and a half year period where the government actually did offer some kind of relief, that relief did not apply to you. So if you thought, oh, I have student loans and I'm hearing from everyone that payments don't need to be made, well, if you actually had private loans, you needed to make those payments, wow. right? So I did have a lot of that. I saw that with my clients where um, they were coming to me and they said, oh yeah, but my student loans are on pause. And I pull the report and I say, actually your student loans are with a private lender. So you have a full 12 months of missed payments and they're shocked. They have no idea that they had a loan with somebody so else. So they wouldn't get notification in the mail? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, a lot of times if you're not signed on with, you know, let's say you only get electronic messages and it goes to junk, you're mm. not going to see any notice that you're late unless you have a reason to pull your credit. So there's a lot of that. And also the government doesn't make it easy because, for example, you have, uh, I'll say Navient, for example, they're one of the biggest servicers. They have both public and private loans. So I have a client who has half of her loans that are public with Navient and she has additional loans that are private with Navient. So in her mind, if she did some kind of forgiveness or, or um, forbearance, but it was only on the government side, she had no idea that they were late on the private side. So it gets very messy, very sticky. Um, it's not a system that's built to help you all the time. They say, here, take out a loan. I'll give it to you at a low interest rate. But what happens once you graduate school and they expect you to start making payments on it? It's very clunky. So, uh, yes, there's been some difficulty. But, you know, the more information we have, the more information I can provide, obviously, would be happy to, <laughs> to do that. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, the situation where you feel that it's affecting people's ability yes. to borrow the money to get a house. Student loans, if you have balances that are quite high, um, again, sometimes I've seen where a person individually, they're not making a huge monthly payment on their student loan. It could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe their reported income is on the lower side or they're in a deferment or they're in an extended forbearance. Their monthly payment at the time might be zero dollars or it might be very low. So they think, oh, it's not impacting my debt to income ratio. I can definitely afford to buy a house. So they go, the mortgage officer runs the numbers and they say, well, actually, you know, your student loan balance is 400,000. We still have to have something account in the debt to income ratio. We're going to take a percent of that or half a percent of that. And actually your student loan payment that I have to record 
is $1,000 or whatever that number is. And now they don't qualify all of a sudden. So yes, this starts to become an issue when you start applying for things. So even if you're not making monthly payments or you think "Eh, it's on pause, I don't need to worry about it, it does still factor into calculations. So borrowers have to be aware. Um, We have to have a smart plan with how we want to handle our student loans. I do get that question a lot. Should I just pay this off and get rid of that debt? Or should I do this? And, you know, it, it's a conversation. I don't always have the best answer, right? But it's having that conversation. Case that, by case. Yeah. And, it, you know, because I can't tell someone what to do with their money, but it pr- allows us to have a conversation and make a decision. So, for example, I have a client who lives down in Georgia. She has public student loans. So these are through the government. For whatever reason, a big portion of those student loans that are public, the interest rate is like 13, 14 percent. It's very high. And it's difficult because they're in repayment. And she actually is an amazing borrower where she's been making payments. Now, her balance is so large that her monthly payment on her student loan bill is close to eighteen hundred dollars a month. And it's hard. She lives in Georgia and she's trying to start her own business. She's in the fitness space. She wants to open up a gym. And so we had these conversations and I said, what's your income now? What are you bringing in? A huge portion of her income has to go towards her student loan. So we said it might be beneficial temporarily to do a deferment, let's say for six months or 12 months, just so you can take all of the money that you're bringing in through the business and reinvest in the business Mm -hmm. so that you can grow that. And eventually when she makes larger amounts of money, bigger money, she has the flexibility to pay pay more on the student loans. But yeah, when you're strapped like that month to month, it gets hard. And it is something that we have to plan for and have a strategy for and decide what we're going to do. Samantha, have you seen cases where parents would co-sign on a student loan for children and how it's impacting parents' life right now while they are trapped with this whole entire student loan situation? Yeah, I do see that all the time. I see Parent PLUS loans, you know, all the time that show up. Um, The hard thing is when you sign on for a Parent PLUS loan, it is not your loan, right? (laughs) You're like, this is my child's loan, so therefore they should be responsible. Now, if your child forgets to put you in some kind of repayment program or you know you don't have that conversation, the loans are out under your name. So you are, at the end of the day, responsible, responsible. for paying this loan back. Right. So I do see some miscommunication where it says, hey, you were supposed to set up the auto pay or you were supposed to do this. And like the loan's not in my name. I don't, you know. So I do see that a lot of times um, miss payments that then impact a parent and being able to buy a house or being able to qualify for a new car. Right. So that does happen all the time (laughs) that we do want to be mindful of that. And also, you know, certain parent plus loans, depending on when you got it or the type of loan that you got, they also were not included in the CARES Act. So I've seen some of that, too, where people thought, well, I'm getting emails that some of my, you know, Navient loans are covered. And they say, well, actually, these some of them were these three or four were. But these two or three actually are parent plus loans that are specific to this particular uh, loan program. And those didn't apply. Wow. So we are seeing a lot of that, too, where it's, again, a lot of misinformation, a lot of uh, confusion, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. in the space. Uh, but yes, we have to figure something out. I hope the government finds some kind of solution here because they don't make it easy for us to be able to navigate the situation. Thank you, Samantha. This was such very informative episodes, yeah. and I definitely can't wait for our next uh, topic, which we're going to talk about bankruptcy okay. and how it impacts people's credit also. So everyone, please continue to watch us. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'm looking forward to the next episode. Thank you.